Well, Jerry, I, when I asked you if we could come to talk to you about this, I didn't quite know how you were going to take it because you and I have been friends for 25 years or yeah. more. <laughs> and um, when you started to experience this, we didn't even talk about it at the time. No, I didn't talk about it with very many people. Okay, so what we're talking about now is Cherry received a diagnosis, and she didn't tell us, our, her close friends, about it for a little while because you needed to process it. Yeah, it, it kind of just steamrolled once it, it all started, and it, it seemed like if I, if I told one person, it kind of drained me somewhat of the energy that I needed mm -hmm. to get through, so I just... It was a, a conscious decision necessarily um, to not tell people. It's just that it seemed to work better for me. So Jerry and I have been friends for probably about 25 years. And um, I remember this day that we, several of our girlfriends got together and we had a little dinner one night. And you came in and you had a little scarf around your head. <laughs> And you looked beautiful, but I remember us looking at each other and thinking, hmm, the scarf is nice, but what is this about? <laughs> and Cherry is always a little bit private, so, you know, we didn't want to pry, but some things have been going on. We, we try to see each other as regularly as we can, but we, our chick friends do, but um, sometimes a little time passes and some things have been going on in your life. So um, I want you to tell us a little bit about what happened. Well, what happened was I was, um, you know, I had kind of a knowing something was going on, was just a feeling. I was riding down the road one day, and I, I felt a little pea-sized lump in my right breast. Uh, no pain, nothing. It just it wasn't, hadn't been there before. It was September, and I realized I hadn't gotten my mammogram. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to have had my mammogram in, like, July. Mm -hmm. And since I had not gotten it, I, I immediately, when I got the, the next day, I scheduled my mammogram, and I had a feeling mm -hmm. I'd get a call back, and I did get a call back to redo the mammogram. Okay. And uh, then I didn't hear anything until I got uh, a call mm -hmm. saying that I needed to see a surgeon. And so that would, you know, piqued my curiosity. They wanted to just review things. They didn't say what it was. So at this point, had you told your family uh, what Joe knew, but that was all. Your husband. And my and my daughter was living here at the time, and I do not understand uh, how it came to be that day that she went with me out to Martin Army. Mm -hmm. uh, when I went to see the surgeon, well, I guess I, I kind of bypassed the whole. Uh, biopsy part, because mm -hmm. I had gone for that um, before then. Um, but my daughter was with me when the surgeon told me what the results were, that it was a malignant cancer. It was small, stage one, but it was out of the safety margins, which would mean I would need a lumpectomy, and they would need to take lymph nodes. Okay, so I know how close you and your daughter are, so I'm very glad that she was with you when that happened because I've had several of my friends who thought, oh, it's no big deal, I'm fine, I can get the doctor by myself. And then later on, when they're crying all the way home, they're wishing they had taken someone with them. Well, so I'm glad she was with She you. was the one crying and I was fine <laughs> because I was in shock, I think. Yeah. I really was. And you always have this positive attitude anyway. Well, everything's going to be okay. Well, yeah. I, I really felt like because I knew something was wrong, mm -hmm. I had that warning, okay? Uh, 
and I had a premonition that I'd be going back in for more testing, that I felt like I'd be getting biopsied. And I got several biopsies, as it turned out. Okay, so what happened after you got the results of the biopsies? Well, that is when I got the call to go see the surgeon. Okay. And the surgeon gave me um, the results. And he wanted to schedule surgery right then. And I said, I need to process this. I need to think about it. And I did go back in a few days. And I told him I really wanted to get a second opinion because I just, I didn't feel like it was something I needed to rush into. Mm -hmm. If it was that small, it was okay. He didn't want me to have a a second opinion because he wanted to do the surgery. But I did get a second opinion, went with a surgeon that uh, I had full faith in, who have had some experience with, and the surgery went well. Uh, had it just before Thanksgiving that year of mm-hmm. 2012. Okay. And it wasn't until the first of the year that I started my chemo treatments. I had the port implanted in in my chest. It was supposed to come over here, but it uh, something went wrong. They had to go over here, so you you, you don't know what's going to happen ever. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a year of chemo, and it was discovered I was HER2 positive. So that um, that prompted the longer chemo. Mm-hmm and the combination of drugs that they were using. And somewhere in the spring, I had six weeks of radiation. And then since that time, I have been taking tamoxifen. Uh, As a maintenance drug? As a maintenance drug, it's to, um, it's a hormone blocker. However, I tried several drugs, like three different ones before we, landed on the tamoxifen. Um, but it, it, it seems fine. There are some side effects, but not enough to make me want to set it aside and run the risk of this coming back. Well, one thing I know about you is once you set your mind on something, you are very aggressive in making sure that things happen and right. that they take place. And so when you found out that you did have this cancer, you were very, very aggressive in your treatment. And so this meant that your whole routine of your piano students and your family life and all your social obligations, everything just pretty much came to a halt. Not really, because I continued with the piano lessons. But I I had some great... <clears throat> little students and some older students as well. But the parents were just so loving. and ca- They gave me hugs and um, they were understanding when, on the days when I did have to cancel an appointment or I would start giving lessons and then I find that I was too weak and I had to curtail one okay. out of the day or something. But I continued to do that. And con- continued to go over and visit my mother. But I, I really didn't do much else all of that year. Uh, the chemo took a lot out of me. I, would, I had it scheduled so I could go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did. Went to bed mm-hmm. and um, worked my self up to the day when I could go teach and then it got a little bit better and then back again. um, I thought that was best Mm -hmm. for me. And there were a lot of my friends that I didn't even tell until it was all over with. And it wasn't that I didn't want them to know. I I didn't care, but it's just I only had so much energy to devote 
two things. Right. And like I couldn't call you and tell you all the little details about what was going on because it's it it just would take it out of me. Right. And, I was then, used to doing things by myself too. I was about to say I know how independent you are. But I'm so glad that you had your daughter yeah. here because I've heard she you mention several did. times how she just took such good care of you. She sure did. She sure did. Well, Cherry, in speaking to other women who maybe have gone through this or, or don't know if they're even going through it because they haven't had a mammogram yet, what would you say to them after you've had this whole experience? What did you take from it? If you think something might be wrong, get it checked out because mm -hmm. uh, it could be that there's something. But you put your mind at rest, at least, you know, if there's nothing wrong. Right. But it, it pays to get it checked out. Well, there's a lot of research out there now about the different stages and ages that women should go and have mammograms done. But we are of the belief that you should have a mammogram whenever you feel like you need to have a mammogram and your doctor's ready for you to have one. Um, some research says to stop having it after a certain age, but I don't believe that. So mm -hmm. you need to talk to your doctor and to um, people who have experienced and also look up the research. Research things for yourself. Get in there and dig out and find some information that fits you and your lifestyle. And please don't use that you don't have insurance or you don't think you can afford it as a reason or an excuse not to go get that mammogram, ladies, because there's organizations out there that will pay for it, that will help you. You can go get the screening and please take care of yourselves because we love you and we want you to take good care of yourself. So, Cherry, it was, it was kind of hard for me to ask you to do this because... It was so personal to you, and I knew that. So thank you so much for letting us come in your home today and, and share what happened. And I'm so happy well, that you have been able to put that behind you now. Well, there's one thing I did want to mention. Okay. That I discovered when I was going through the treatment, in particular radiation. It was about that time that I was uh, began to lose my hair. Okay. So I decided to shave my head, and I did. And it didn't bother me. It didn't bother me at all. I just knew it was a part of it. Mm -hmm. However, I read into quite a few women who it did bother, and it, they were very hurt by it, and it was very painful for them. Mm -hmm. So I learned to... Uh, to have uh, sympathy for them uh, and what they were going mm -hmm. through. That we don't all react the same right. way to things. Right. So. I remember uh, interviewing a lady one time and she had really long, beautiful red hair. And she said that it hurt her so bad to lose all that beautiful red hair because she that was so much a part of her identity. Yeah. But then she said later on, after she did all of her treatments and she came out on the other side, she realized that that was not really her identity, that her yeah. strength inside of her was much stronger than she thought it was, and that God just gave her the strength to get through the whole thing. And then her hair grew back. It was a little bit different texture, but it did grow back. From the first moment of being diagnosed, and I came home and told my husband, he said, I you're going to be fine. You've, we've got this. Okay? You don't have anything to worry about. He had such faith that it was all going to be okay. That it was, it, it made things so much easier for mm -hmm. me. Took a lot of pressure off. I didn't have to worry about uh, pleasing him with my appearance because he knew it was all a part of it. He says, you've got to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's all what you got to go through. And the baldness, the uh, just looking sick all the time, <laughs> feeling bad, the scars and, and disfigurement, that's all part of it. So it, it was wonderful. Well, kudos to Joe. Yeah. <laughs> He's a sweetheart.
Well, thank you for sharing that with us. You're welcome. Well, Cherry has done a few things that um, I'm seeing in some of my other friends, too. After this was all over with, she sort of reinvented herself, and she came up with some new hobbies. And one of the things that she started doing is making jewelry. You're wearing a piece of your jewelry now, aren't you? Yes. Uh, I was just playing around with beads and uh, didn't think I could do a thing. But I've discovered that I can. So you, you have and, new and people talent like besides yeah. um, playing the piano. Right. Yeah. Well, would it be okay if we go in your jewelry making room and you can show us some of the pieces that you've made? Uh, certainly, certainly. Okay. This is my work room. It, it, it's a sitting room off the bedroom, but it's become a workspace. Um, and, and it's, most of the job is just trying to keep it uh, less cluttered if possible. And it's the more beads I buy, the more impossible that is, of course. <laughs> but I, I house my beads over here. I work here. I work on top of something I've already worked on uh, previously. It's when I get a thought, um, I just want to work on it right then. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to have to clean up, which is not a very good thing. Well, where do you, know, you get the inspiration for the pieces that oh, you make? There are things like, um, like I have a, a Cosmos series that... Can you see that? that I drew from this picture. Here's one example of a that. piece that I did inspired by this photograph. That is gorgeous. And I did probably about five other pieces mm -hmm. once I got started with that. There are things like uh, pictures of rugs. A rug and the colors that I see there inspire me to, to do a piece. I'll That's wake, awesome because yeah. that, that means that you're seeing the whole world in a whole different light It now. is. <laughs> I look out the window and whatever I see in the morning, I want to create something that, that has those colors. And the colors change all the time. That's right. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that with thank us. You. I've been seeing people wearing your jewelry around town. Some of our friends have some pieces of your jewelry and I know some of your family members do. Yeah. So are you planning on selling any of your jewelry or what are you, what are you going to do with it? Yes. It, it, that just kind of evolved, didn't in it? In God's time, whenever. <laughs> <laughs> little by little, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm happy for you because this is, it, it takes a lot of talent to make something this beautiful and time. And I'm, I'm just thrilled that you have taken this up because this is gorgeous and this is something that people who love you can always keep. Yeah. All right. Well, Terry, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Thank you, Rebecca. I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> and uh, we want to thank everybody for joining us today on Senior Moments because we care about you. So we want you to go get that mammogram. Tell your daughters and your granddaughters and your nieces and your other family members to go take care of it. Don't make any excuses. Just go do it because we want you to be a part of our lives for a long time. Right. That's right. Well, on behalf of CTV Beam, we want to thank you for joining us today and we'll see you next time on Senior Moments. Mm -hmm.